hello everyone so welcome back to the next video so if you like this video please give a like and subscribe to the youtube channel also because i think it will help me to further continue uh, about my work so this uh, so this video will be about netcat series only and in this video i will tell you how can you transfer data with the help of the netcat suppose if you are doing a penetration testing and you and you have successfully gained access into one computer so with the so whether or not uh, suppose wget command or the simple http server which is run by the python is may, maybe not available so in so in that case what is essential is that you can use the netcat command to transfer or to transfer the file or to say or to send the file so therefore netcat command is very much uh, useful in this type of work so how can you send so how can you send the data or send any type of uh, send any type of file or you can do one thing uh, uh, you can uh, with the with the help of your terminal you can write any data into into that text or the term uh, in, you you can create a file with the help of the net net can and with the help of your terminal you can write something into the .txt file so i'm going to show you how can you do that so store start the listener like a netcat uh, so the command of netcat is netcat hyphen l uh, first, first I am going to the directory of CD desktop. So I am in desktop, desktop. Then write netcat hyphen lnvp, and then give the port uh, at, at which port do you want to open the netcat. So in this case, I am going to open on port one two three four, and uh, and this I will what uh, I will write this. Actually, what what I am doing that uh, this you you all know this command. This is a basic command netcat hyphen lnvp one two three four. Basically, I am listening on this port. Uh, L for listening, N for no IP address, no DNS, and numeric IP address, no DNS, V for verbose, and P for to port. So I have mentioned the port, and I will record all this file to a text known as data, uh, no, in a file known as data.txt. So what will happen? It will record all type of things which is coming to the listener into data.txt. So it is, uh, so it is listening on any file and have created the file known as data.txt. And a new tab. Uh, don't mind that uh, this uh, says suppose there are two tabs in uh, in my terminal and don't look at the tabs so take this take this tab as a computer so this is a temp so this is a terminal of your of your computer means the hackers computer and this is a terminal of the uh, I will say the target computer the victims computer so what will you do suppose netcat hyphen nv and first of all so what is the ip address of the your computer ip if config you can know this this is the ip address of of your terminal only because i am using this so i i will get the ip address from here only so netcat hyphen nv 192.168.8.135 then what will i do i will give the port 1234 i am telling the netcat to connect this into the ip address by the port 1234 and this net this netcat command will listen to any IP address of this local of this local machine, actually this machine have IP address of this, so it will get connected to this IP address using this port. So I have got, I will press enter, and this is saying that it is open. So what will I do? I will write something like, say suppose I am writing hello, and in the next line I am writing hello, then Python, like this. So suppose uh, I have written all this. So actually, so from this you can see. There, I have created one file known as data.txt. So I hope uh, it will all get recorded into data.txt. So there is a file in my desktop which I have created known as data.txt. So if I open if I open this file using any text reader, you can see there are two commands. Actually, there are these are not two commands. These are just words which I have written in the terminal, like hello and hello Python. So these two words I have written in the terminal using netcat, and I have sent this user. Uh, I am sending this using netcat, and this netcat is listening. On port one two three four and the and the data which is coming on port one two three four is transferring the data to data dot txt. So so you all know so you all know you can send the data if you send the data by the if you have a if you are running a server or if you are using a Kali Linux there is a web root server of the Kali Linux by which if you put some if you put the file over here and if you start start your service like service Apache's to start. So if, so if you start the service. Apache to start. It will start your web direct. It will start your web directory, and you can easily send the data over there. So in some scenario, I am taking the worst case scenarios. Apache 2 is not working, or you don't have proper reliable connection, or the or or one thing is happening that that computer 
uh, that computer have doesn't have sufficient command like wget. Wget is a command which is used to download something based on uh, from the URL. So wget service is not available and you can't download any type of services on the hackers computer. In that case, netcat is very much essential. So by using this, you can easily transfer the data from one computer to another using netcat. You can always do like this. You can listen the file over over here also the dot sh file. Suppose uh, netcat hyphen data dot s uh, data one dot sh and you have and start start this listener and this put this comment and then and then if you and then if you write this python over here uh, data dot uh, data dot sh has have the file known as uh, data where is the data dot sh data dot sh have the file known as python and in linux how can you execute something like this I'm just zooming, zooming. CD desktop. Oh, sorry, ls ls and let's close all this. I'm closing all the connection and ls. You can see a file known as data dot sh. Let's give the permission chmod plus x. Actually, this is the this is the command in Linux to give permission to all types of user. So so that the user can execute this file data dot sh. And if you do ls, you, see, it, you can see data dot sh is an executable file. Data dot sh. And if you press, you can see the Python is opening. So this, so in this case, you can see Python is opening. You can put any type of backdoor or the reverse shell command, and you can send this add a shell command into some into the victim's computer. Actually, Linux open. In actually, the extension of the Linux is dot sh. Just like Windows is dot exe, so you can use dot sh and if you do a dot slash data dot sh, it will open the file and it will open your backdoor or or anything that you want to open. So these are the things you can do with uh, netcat and this is very much useful in terms of penetration testing and in ethical hacking. So I hope you will like this video. So thank you for watching the video.